Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Relationship Talk with Sharonda. My name is Sharonda Parker, or AKA Auntie Sharonda, and I am your host. And today we're gonna actually go through, we're gonna dissect a letter that was sent to me. And I'm entitling this video that he don't want what you want, okay? So we're gonna break this down because a lot of times when we are dating, we have to know why we're dating. Are we dating just because we want companionship? Are we dating with a purpose because we want marriage? Are we dating because we're trying to get some free meals? Are we dating because we bored? Like we need to know what it is that we're hoping to get from these relationships that we're establishing or that we're that we're entering into whatever type of relationship it may be. So I'm gonna start this off and it says, good morning, Ms. Sharonda, I need some advice. I don't know if you're still posting this on your wall, but if so, can you please keep me anonymous? Of course, okay? I'd rather you and I, but the guy I've been dating for two years now says that he loves me, but I've caught him on multiple occasions texting other women, and one even sent him naked, naked photos of herself. He entertained it, and he even sent this female money for lunch on different occasions. Let's stop right there. Let's stop right there. We're going we're gonna to stop that. Right there. Okay. Dating for two years. First of all, let me just tell you something. When a man recognizes that he got something good, men tend to want to lock it down, meaning that they tend to want to not let you get away, especially when they're at a certain point in their life. Um, they know what they want and they know what you want, meaning that you went in it and you basically said, look, I'm going in this because I have a desire for something serious, um, some type of commitment. And I would like for us to be exclusively dating. In other words, you've communicated what it is that you want. That that That's pretty much what has happened. In this situation, it's just dating for two years and yet you still have options out here in the world, meaning that you not only are communicating with other people, y'all texting, sexting, and you sending money, meaning that the resources are going somewhere else, okay? That in itself lets you know that this person is really not serious about you. This person is really not concerned with losing you. This person has not elevated you to a certain point in their life where they feel like, you know, you're not replaceable. See, at this point in the relationship, he still feel like you're replaceable. Meaning that he's still dibbling and dabbling out there because he thinks that he can find better somewhere along, somewhere along the way. He feel like something else out there for him. So he not going to just lock it down and commit to you. I'm going to keep on reading. When I confronted him about it, he said that he needed to get himself together. So therefore, I can't hold him to a monogamous relationship. No commitment. This person telling you, baby, I don't want no commitment with you. Like, I enjoy the time that we spend together. I enjoy jumping off up in your tail when it's time. We might even wine and dine and go eat and go do this. And we might go take trips and birthdays and whatever. That grown people do to enjoy themselves. However, I have not accepted that you are the one for me. I'm still in an entertaining some other stuff out there. Because I'm not going to... Uh, commit myself to being monogamous to you. See, when a person honest with you on this type of level and they telling you that it ain't no just me and you and this ain't no monogamous, you ain't really got no business writing me because you already know that this person does not want that level of commitment with you. And the thing is, you holding on to the idea of what you think could happen, the potential of what you think can happen and you're not really dealing with the reality of what's going on in your life at the moment. And two years is a long time to, to go through this with somebody. Two years is a very long time for no commitment and a person is flat out telling you that we're not monogamous. I'm going to keep reading. Because he can't take other people while, while in one, and I respect that. But the thing is, you saying out your mouth that you respect this whole situation with him not being monogamous. But, but the thing is, we are, you really don't respect it because if you did, you wouldn't be writing. Like if you respected the idea of you and him just doing what y'all doing and he not monogamous and you know he dealing with other people 
and he hasn't committed himself to you, if you really respected it, your feelings wouldn't be in it this deep. You, you would not be writing this. So sometimes we have to be real with ourselves. We have to be realistic with ourselves because sometimes we will play these games with ourselves and we will talk, we, we will think only on potential and not the reality of what's actually going on. Okay, he still comes over. He claims he loves me. He still want to take me on trips, have sex. Hold on. Have sex. Also, we don't have normal sex. He acts as if nothing is happening. I feel that this is wrong to me. Okay, let me say this here. This is how grown people enjoy themselves, y'all. See, when you get to a certain point in your life, you want to go out there in the world and you want to experience life and you want to see things and you want to do things. And a lot of times, we don't want to do those things alone. So whoever we got in our life at this point in our life is who we share those experiences with. And you, and he's sharing these experiences with you right now because you you available, you there. That's the only reason why you getting these experiences. The thing is, other people may be getting these same experiences too. You don't know. So the thing is, we take all of these little things that the person is doing and, and, and for us as women, we think it means something. Oh, because we had sex and it was romantic and he kissed me this type of way. And oh, he went down on me and then he, he, he put it in and then he pulled it out and went down again and he flipped me and he did this. And then we thinking that because he had that type of sex with us, that it means something. But the thing is, this person just may enjoy having awesome sexual experiences and they may enjoy giving and receiving pleasure. So that means every time they lay up, regardless of who they laying up with, they putting their all into it. But here we go, overthinking it, thinking that, oh, I know he can't be putting it on somebody else like that. Like, oh, I, I, I. I, know, I know I'm the only one that's getting this like this here. And that's not necessarily the truth because you have some men that are just really good in bed, okay? All right, I feel that this is wrong to me. I think it is wrong that you have allowed yourself to get caught up into a situation with somebody who's telling you that they don't want what you want, okay? I've, I've come up a lot since I met him, but I don't think he should be getting commitment benefits from me if he not committed. But that also means that we might fall apart. But the thing is, you talking about falling apart, but there's nothing there to fall apart. You in La La Land, you thinking that you building on a foundation and this person telling you that they ain't even bought the lot to build a foundation. You know how when you go and you decide that you want to build a house and you go and buy the property and then you lay the foundation and then you build the house, this person ain't even purchased the property let alone started a foundation to build anything. This person is telling you, I'm still out here looking for property to buy. I I, I like the view over here because when I'm over here, I like the view. But when I'm over there, I like the view over there too. But I ain't necessarily then, um, committed to either, e either location. I ain't committed. So the thing is, we, you know, you're saying that this isn't fair to you but the thing is, you're holding on to something that, that isn't even there. You're holding on to a figment of your imagination. You're holding on to a, a fairy tale. That's what you're doing. And in the end, as women, we're typically the one to be hurt. Because men, they not programmed the way we program. We, we do all this feeling, 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 emotion, all this uh, nurturing, all this different stuff. Whereas men, they logical, meaning that if he decides to commit himself to a certain type of woman, it's certain things that she's checking off for him. And the thing is, you just a placeholder until he finds this woman that's checking off what it is that he's looking for. It's something in your life that's causing him to say that I don't necessarily want to commit to you forever. I don't know what it could be, but I'm just telling you that when it comes down to his boxes that need to be checked off, Something about you ain't there because it don't take no man two years to figure out if he want a monogamous relationship. I ain't even talking about marriage. I'm just talking about a monogamous relationship. Or you may be dealing with a man that's just not monogamous. And even if that's the case, then you still have to 
deal with accepting it. Okay. Um, then you say that, uh, the last thing that really stuck out to me that you say that I came up a lot since I met him, you might've come up with ma ma materialistic stuff. Like you might've got a new bag, you know, you, you might've got, um, some type of materialistic incentive, but when it comes down to your emotions, you have not come up. You, you haven't come up when it comes down to your emotions, when it comes down to your emotions, you are literally making withdrawals and no deposits are going in. So in your mind, you looking at, okay, this materialistic stuff, but the thing is, he still ain't giving you what you really want. And that's just a relationship. That's just monogamy. We ain't even talking about rings, marriage, and engagement. We ain't even got there yet. So the thing is, yeah, you might've come up, but the one thing that you want, you can't get. So have you really come up? Or is he really just in the way at this point in your life? I feel like it's the latter. That he's just in the way at this point in your life. But you have to be willing to allow this to fall apart, like you say, and allow him to go be free and live his life how he want to live it. Because if he was going to commit to you, it don't take two years to say, you know what, let's get serious. And, and you and I, we don't. it's just going to be us. And we're going to see where this go from this point on. Whether it leads to engagement, whether it leads to... What, whatever it could possibly lead to, that ain't what's going on in this situation with you. So basically, you know, my only recommendation is treat it, treat it, treat it for like treat it like what it is. Treat it like what it is. You you probably ain't dealing with no other people. You probably monogamous and all of this kind of stuff. And the thing is, when you have things like this that come along that vex your spirit on this type of level. Sometimes you got to know when to let that go. Because, see, I don't want nothing around that's going to vex my spirit. First of all, I have a very sensitive spirit, meaning that I have a, a discerning spirit. You know, a lot of people talk about intuition and all of this kind of stuff. But, you know, I, I have a discerning spirit, meaning that I see things for what it is. I see the, the potential of, you know, in other words, I see the direction that it's going before it even get there. So I just think that you need to pray for some wisdom and, and guidance, you know, and some strength to allow you to be able to lose yourself from this situation right here. Okay. And any of you other ladies that's going through this, if you know that you want monogamy, don't settle for anything other than that. And it doesn't guarantee that the person is going to just be completely faithful and all of this kind of stuff. But the thing is, you can have an expectation when you have an agreement. Like, in other words, I can't expect anything if me and you haven't agreed upon anything. But if me and you agree upon monogamy, then that means that I can expect monogamy. But if you choose not to be monogamous, that means you broke the agreement. But this ain't even an agreement. Okay? All right. So, just letting you know, y'all see that they have upped the size of the latest kangaroo. It is not the little bitty bottle anymore. They have made it the same size as the male kangaroo. This is the liquid. So I'm just showing you the difference. These two are for the men and this is for the women and they have literally up the size of the bottle. So you're getting two times, uh, it's two, two times more or whatever you want to call it. You're getting twice the amount for the same great price here at the PPG store. I hope you all enjoyed your weekend. Make sure you continue to like, share, and subscribe. Um, I had a pretty good weekend, y'all. I had a very full weekend. Very full weekend. Guess what? I baked a 7-Up cake. First of all, let me just tell you this here. I baked it two days in a row. The very first day, I used unsalted butter, and I was like, uh-uh, this don't, it's beautiful, but it don't taste with that taste that I'm looking for. So I did it the next day and I did it with salted butter. And let me tell you, that is one of the best more 7-Up cakes. Baby, look, you can't tell me nothing. All I'm going to tell you is, baby, Thanksgiving, get ready for Sharonda Parker. Because I'm going to have 7-Up cakes for everybody. That's that's going to be my signature dish. I'm coming with, I'm coming with the 7-Up the cake. Y'all be blessed. You all enjoy the rest of your day. Come see me here at the PPG store. Uh, I will be here pretty much all day today, so come see me. You all be blessed.